slugs, gunk, and the moon. This is my audiobook review of Artemis, written by Andy Weir and narrated by Rosario Dawson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Drove Talks. And again, for all the less patient of you out there, we're going to kick this off with a quick thumbs up, thumbs down review. So, this book is a bit decisive. You either seem to love it or hate it. I personally enjoyed it. So, I would give this a thumbs up and a recommendation. So, go out there, get this book, read it, listen to it, do what you got to do. It is well worth your time. So, let's start off with the story. The story of Artemis is not breaking any ground here. And from all the reviews that I've read, that seems to be the biggest gripe. That the Martian, you know, Andy Weir wrote The Martian. This is his second book, just in case you weren't aware of that. The Martian was groundbreaking in its own way in the sense that you had this realistic approach to science. The survival of one man on another planet. We'll do a review on that later because the audiobook on that one is quite amazing. So a lot of people were let down that this book, especially in the area of story, was just inferior to that book. And to be honest with you, those people have a good point. But if you take that background out, the story is actually quite good. I would actually say that this has a high paced, exciting story. You got some very lovable and amazing characters that stay with you long after the book is over. It's a very believable world. And it's a world that I would actually like to live in or at the very least visit. It takes place in our future. And the majority of the setting takes place on the moon. On a place called Artemis. So the Artemis is a a space station filled with five bubbles. I believe it's five. I need to go back and check that. But they appear to be domes on the surface, but there's actually a lower half on the bottom. So you get these bubbles. And it's a society. It's a, it's a place. It's for, there's business attributes to it. But for the most part, it's a resort, you know, for the very wealthy or the once in a lifetime type visits. And people go there to experience the moon in all its glory. And they really de- do a good job. Andy Weir does a very good job of depicting this world. It's a, it's a small world, uh, very similar to his uh, take on the Martian. I mean, you had all of Mars, but you were closed down just to the portions of Mars that our protagonist there was going against. So this is a very similar situation. We got Jazz, uh, which is one of the best and my favorite character in the book. Uh, she is amazing. Uh, people didn't like her for different reasons, and I, it's really hard to get into without going into spoiler, spoiler territory. But to me, the, the, they were wrong. Jazz is a great character. She uses her intellect and is very energetic. She gets in as much trouble as I think anyone could possibly get into, but she always gets herself out of trouble. And she, of course, is accompanied by a wonderful cast of people. So, I mean, this book is very very fun it's not going to win any literature awards um but there's very much enjoyment to be had here this would actually make one great movie or even better a tv series so andy weir if you're out there start talking to these people because because the martian is not the only one i truly believe this would be as good a movie if not maybe even better than the martian uh but the martian the movie in my opinion, was not as good as the book. But it was a good movie, just not as good as the book. I think this has a chance to be better than the book for some of the issues that I had mentioned earlier. So, again, story, awesome. Uh, The father of Jazz, Jazz's father, Amar Bashar, uh, he was also one of my favorite characters. He's a a Muslim, uh, very religious, and he's just at odds with his daughter. She is also a Muslim, and she and they do share certain common beliefs, but she is very, very modern, and he is very, very traditional, and they, and they butt heads all the time. But one thing remains clear throughout the whole book, 
and that's he loves her she respects him and loves him back and the the relationship that they have the tension and the resolution everything top notch i really enjoyed both those characters uh there's a lot of characters to be enjoyed here let's talk about nagugi and calvin so calvin is a pen pal to artemis and their letters back and forth or i guess they would be emails back and forth it fills in the backstory and becomes kind of its own side plot that actually collides with the ongoing story and i really enjoyed that element it was it was a really neat way to fill in some of these these plots or subplots if you will that are, are that are taking place Oogie, uh she basically created this uh society on the moon and she she is integral to both the the boom in kenya where is the launch station the primary launch station to the moon and artemis itself and uh she's an older lady and and she's fabulous that's all i'm gonna say about her listen to the book if you want to listen to any more again these are really great characters and more to come you know let's talk about them. um we got dale we got rudy um i'm not gonna go too much into them because uh let me just say that i like the way each of them were done uh rudy's uh he's an ass there, there's there's no way around it but 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 i liked him being an ass in this story so there's that and there is potential love interest here and normally i'm not a big fan of these love triangle things like that but there's no love triangles but but there is a theme there is a device that needs to be tested and you're wondering where is this testing going to happen and there's potential suspects if you will and uh although we don't get confirmation exactly as to how this device is tested we do get kind of a very good send-off onto where eventually will be tested and i thought that was nicely done i really liked that and that brings me to probably one of my favorite characters and that's martin or martin savoda he is the nerdy friend he is the nerdy guy that gets awkward around girls don't really know how to talk to him uh does his best generally just seems to care and i i liked what he brought to the story that aspect of him to the story was a relief in certain circumstances and very much welcome so for me when we're talking about story um it's hard there's a lot of missteps and when you're ranking this against uh other stories it is definitely not the best story out there but i with that with all of that said i would give this a four out of five uh there's a lot of people obviously that exist that are going to disagree with that but you know everyone has their own opinion everyone has different types of enjoyment so but for me this was a four out of five type story so with that said we got the story behind us it's time to talk about what is the best part of this book and that is our narrator rosario dawson oh rosario she brought it she brought it good she she breathed life into all these characters i was apprehensive when i found out she was the narrator because i love her as an actress i love pretty much everything she's ever done at least everything i've seen her in and sometimes you know actors try to make that jump i don't wanna you know james franco talking to you sometimes maybe but not everyone can pull it off and i was afraid that she wasn't gonna be able to pull it off but boy was i wrong she breathed life like i said into these characters and she made jazz amazing she made everyone amazing but i just really really enjoyed rosario dawson in this she for me was the best part of this book she is going to not only affect uh this score which i'm giving narration a five out of five rosario dawson keep it up i want to hear you in every single book that i possibly can you were amazing uh now let's go to listenability so listenability on this book for me i really enjoyed it I, i really thought this was a fun book uh i took a little while to get it to download it to purchase it and download it because of a lot of the reviews i was listening to because i was like wow you know it's not going to be as good as the martian and and it's not but 
finally I broke down. I was like, I, I need to see a, a heist on the moon. I just, I just need to, you know, I need, I need to hear this story. And I, I took the risk, listened to it, and I will definitely listen to this book again. Again, it's, it's a very fun book, not breaking any new ground. It's uh, been done before, uh, probably not completely done in this way with these characters, but it is familiar, but it is a good type of familiar. You know, it's like coming home. I, I really enjoyed it. So for listenability, I would give this book a four out of five. So I, what can I say? Like I said at the beginning of the book, I do recommend this. Go pick it up, read it, download it. Uh, you will not, uh, you will not regret it. Well, I guess technically half of you probably will, but you know, fifty-fifty. Take it out there, see see where you fall on that spectrum. Maybe you'll learn something about yourself. I'm sure they'll come out with some sort of personality test based upon if you liked or disliked Artemis. So, you know, there's that to look forward to. So have you read or listened to Artemis? Uh, what, what was your take on it? Where on that spectrum did you fall? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Or did you just enjoy it? I, I look, I, I'm curious to know. Leave a comment down below so we can have a little discussion about that. You know, learn some stuff about ourselves. So that's it for this episode of Dro Talks. Thank you for listening. Hit that like uh, if you liked. Subscribe if you really liked. Hit that bell to get notified, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.